here is uh, case number one, and this is a 40-year-old woman with a four millimeter pigmented macule on the lip. So does anyone want to volunteer what they thought about this case? So, uh, yeah, sure. We have a um, small, looks like probably a small punch biopsy here. Um, by looking at the overall architecture, it, it's you know consistent with the history of the, the oral mucosa there, uh, kind of these paler, uh, the paler epidermis, um, and the uh, basal layer has really prominent hyperpigmentation, um, and so I thought this was really good for a, a melanotic macule. Yeah, this is excellent. This is a labial melanotic macule, which can happen both on the, the oral lips or also the genital labia, right? You can have a hyperpigmented uh, macules in, in either spot. Um, and this one I think is perhaps the most stunning example I may have seen because it's a nice, uh, nice punched out uh, lesion here. Like you said, you, you rightly identified the pale glycogenated keratinocytes um, of the, stratif uh, the stratified squamous um, mucosa. Um, so mucosa obviously doesn't usually have a granular layer um, or much of a parakeratosis or I mean much of a corneal layer. Sometimes you get a little para if it's irritated. And then, um, oh, you do have this pale glycogenation uh, oftentimes uh, that tells you that you're dealing with mucosa rather than skin. And the basal layer is very darkly pigmented. But as you guys probably all know, if you did a melanocytic stain here, most of these cells here with their dark pigment are keratinocytes, right? because melanocytes make the melanin pigment and then they feed it to the neighboring keratinocytes. Um, and I've got a little short video on that. If you're watching at home, I can put a link uh, down below that tells how to tell keratinocytes and melanocytes apart. Um, but yeah, basically the, melan the keratinocytes kind of hoard the, the melanin and keep it all for themselves. And so they're the ones that are darkly pigmented here. And um, so you'll usually see increased pigment in the basal layer. It, it seems to be more prominent sometimes down in the tips of reedy, but you can still see it in between the reedy here. If you did a melanocytic stain, which I usually don't do for these, but if you did, there might be a slight increase in the number of single melanocytes along the basal layer, but you're not going to see nesting or confluent growth or anything like that. And you'll be very reassured if you were worried that there maybe were too many melanocytes. Um, a melanocytic marker like SOX10 or MART1 uh, red chromogen would show just, you know, just scattered. You can actually even see them right here. Like, look, see that, that round guy? That's a melanocyte. Here's one right here. Here's one right there. So they're nice and spaced out, maybe slight increase in density, but, but uh, not nesting or anything. And then oftentimes, which is kind of true of any time you have a hyperpigmented lesion in the epidermis, you tend to get a bit of pigment dropout. So you see melan uh, melanin deposits in the uh, superficial, I always want to say dermis, but I guess technically this is like the submucosa uh, here. Um, uh, in any case, though, below the epidermis, you see some pigment um, in the stroma. And uh, that's melanin that's dropped out from the epidermis there. So you can see a mixture of those. This is definitely a much more dramatic example than most cases that I see. Uh, but that's a nice, perfect case of labial melanotic macule, which is benign. And etiologically, I'm not sure if they're the same thing, but I think of them as kind of analogous to lentigo simplex, basically, like a lentigo simplex of the lip or of the, of the labia. Um, but in any case, I think they have very similar features. And here, how we could tell here that we're in actually the, uh, the lip of the mouth is that you can see skeletal muscle here. So skeletal muscle bundles, of course, are going to be common. Oh, look at the striations. Look at that. Wow, it's so fun. I know it's a normal structure, but I really like normal histology. So the, um, uh, in, in, the, um, in the vulva, the labia of the genitals, you're going to see smooth muscle bundles, right? And, and in the, the lips um, in the, around the oral mucosa, you'll see skeletal muscle. Okay, great. Excellent work. Any questions?